Hello and welcome to Unprofessional Engineering. My name is James. And you got Luke. Luke, we're doing one of our, at least one of my favorite episodes each of each year, looking at our Halloween 2020 spectacular. Why is spectacular? Uh, there you go. Spectacular. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that too. Drop the ball there. It's Ooh. not at all surprising to me that you chose the Devil's Holiday as your favorite. <laughs> no comment, Luke. Uh, I love it. So in this episode in particular, so unlike last year where we looked at how some of our favorite candies are made mm, and so then good. ranked our candies, which so I think I think we still have a little bit of resentment with each other over our favorite candies. We do. Uh, this year we're looking at a little bit of Halloween safety for costumes and motorists and other things, as well as how to carve a pumpkin like an engineer. What do you say? That sounds good to me. Good. So where would you like to get started? So I have a whole section, James, that I have entitled uh, Terrible Facts. <laughs> okay. And I, you know, I, That's I, a good I love, way to start. <laughs> I love kicking off with this kind of stuff. So Halloween, aka the deadliest day of the year for children, uh -huh. for the deadliest day of the year for child pedestrian fatalities. Huh. Literally the worst day of the year. And in particular, uh, sunset and one hour after is the deadliest hour for children. It's when they get pedestrians for like it, it is this trend that's been going on like forever. And some neighborhoods have moved trick or treating to Saturday afternoons to kind of help Losers. with this. Neighborhoods that don't care about their children's safety let them go trick or treating like always in the dark. So it's a it's a pretty unsafe holiday. So my terrible facts are going to revolve Luke, around that. I feel like you're setting this up like it's the purge for children, which yeah. I am all in favor of. So <laughs> let's hear some of these terrible facts. Huh? Okay. So uh, first one, kids are two times more likely to be killed on Halloween Ooh. than any other day of the year, strictly because of pedestrian fatalities. 63 mm. percent james that is more than 50 percent <laughs> that is case, thank you <laughs> in case you're not a statistician like i am yes. uh kids do not carry a flashlight i mean did you carry a flashlight when you oh were my, a oh kid? my goodness gracious no i didn't carry a flashlight no. <laughs> but it's just like the parents are totally to blame for this they are uh 70 percent of parents don't go with their kids now that's in my mind that's okay at a certain age well i and, have a stat about that okay let's keep going then so kind of a sub stat to that 12 percent of kids under six are allowed to trick-or-treat by themselves no so there are there's there's kids out there who are six years old these are kids that like go to the bathroom in their pants and they have no <laughs> ability to make any kind of judgment calls and they're allowed to run around at night on the deadliest night of the year in the dark without flashlights this can is this say, is parents. can that age even say trick or treat I, like can I, you talk at six i'm fairly certain you start walking at seven if i recall right these I'm no not wonder a, these kids get mowed down they're just crawling around the streets yeah. <laughs> their diapers my goodness, oh. that is actually all very scary, Luke. It, it's, and I'm not even close to done yet. Oh, uh, one in 13 children have a food allergy. And if you think about food allergies, you know, the big one is peanuts. And I don't know about you, James, but whenever I do Halloween candy, I don't think about allergies and, oh, I only do chocolate or I only do this. I, I grab whatever's in the mixed bag. And if a kid, is allergic to peanuts and he gets a Mr. Good bar. I mean, good luck. Uh, the kids' allergies are not my problem. Yeah, I'm sorry. But kids I'm are sorry dumb. That ki well, again, parents. At nighttime, they're walking around, they shove their hand in the bag, they peel it open, they take a bite, they don't realize it's a Mr. Good bar. And next thing you know, they're in the hospital. Well, first off, if they're grabbing a Mr. Good bar, they deserve to be in the hospital. They do. They do. <laughs> uh, there are 30. 800 Halloween related injuries each and every year. Oh, Most goodness. of these injuries are like trip and fall injuries. Uh, so this doesn't account for like the deaths. This is just people getting hurt. So it's trip and fall, those sorts of things. 
there is $13 million in property damage each year from fires due to jack-o'-lanterns or AKA pumpkins. I saw people that. Use candles. Yes. Which is crazy. Uh, this, now we're going to bring the parents in. Uh, almost 90%, 86% of adults bring alcohol to Halloween parties because who, who doesn't celebrate Halloween without getting drunk, right? Terrible no comment. Parents. No comment. Uh, 52% of vehicle deaths on Halloween are related back to the 90% of drunk parents. Oh, no. Yeah, a lot of drinking oh. and driving accidents happen on Halloween. Ugh. And the final stat, and this one's going to tie in with our pumpkin chat we're going to do a little bit later, is 41% of all injuries during Halloween are specifically related to carving pumpkins. I saw that there was a hefty number of pumpkin carving related injuries, which the good thing is I can understand. Yeah. Yeah. The good thing is they're not fatal. It's like you stab your hand, you slash your finger. I mean, we've all kind of done that, but still you got to go to the hospital sometimes and, you know, get a stitch or two or whatever you need to do. So, uh, so pretty crazy. That is crazy. Wow. Those are great, terrible facts, Luke. <laughs> it puts Halloween in a whole new light. Huh? Deadliest day of the year. Oh, my goodness. You so want to talk safety I, or do you have other I, stuff? No, man. I think safety is exactly where we need to roll into after that. How do yeah. we avoid getting mowed down by a drunkard? Yeah, yeah. So uh, so costume safety. Let's start there, James. Mm-hmm. So nice. everybody wears dark colors. You know, I, I feel like I, don't. Every I dress s- as an angel every year. Well, it's, it's an easy, it's an easy one for you because you're practically there. Uh, the majority of children dress up like the screen person, the guy right. with the black cloak and mask, and that's mm-hmm. terrible. So you don't want to do dark colors. Uh, you want to make sure that you're not wearing a poorly fitted mask. And if you're going to spend 99 cents on a mask, do you really expect it to fit properly on the said six-year-old child that's crawling through the streets because he can't walk? One size fits all. (laughs) Uh, And then it's poor fitted costumes. So not only is the mask too big and they can't see, but the costume itself is too long and they're tripping. Yeah, I've been there. So James, growing up, uh, this is a a personal question. Uh Uh-oh. Did your mom and dad, like the night of Halloween, be like, we're going to dress you up as a hobo and you would just wear like old clothes? Um, in fourth grade, fifth, <laughs> fifth grade, I literally went as a hobo, which I think is probably considered completely inappropriate at this point. Yeah. But we, we at school had a parade where everyone dressed up and we paraded around the gym. And I remember going as a hobo one year. I was but a hobo was... every year. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Every year we'd get in this okay. big argument. Halloween night, I'd be crying because I wanted to have a cool costume like my next door neighbors did. Right. And my mom be like, oh, we'll make something. And I'd be like, no, please don't make it. And then every year I was a hobo. Shout out to my mom. She was very good at costumes. Uh, Very good at like makeup for like going as Dracula. I went as a knight. Um, I won a costume contest with my brother as a scarecrow because what? I mean, that's pretty cool. Look, look how cute I am. How could I not win? So come on yeah. now. Good job, Kathy. Yeah. But I'm sorry oh. to hear about the hobo uh, incidents. So now let's talk about some just general safety tips, not just for the kids, but for the adults. So first of all, make sure that everything your kids are wearing is fire resistant. It's kind of hard not to find that stuff. Like when you buy costumes. I've never that, like, thought of that, but yeah, it, it makes sense. Yeah, at the Halloween stores, because you got all these parents sitting out drunk by their fire pits in their driveways, lighting handing fires. out candy, lighting fires. So make lighting sure everything is, fire. exactly. Make sure they're fire resistant. Avoid wearing masks if possible. Uh, make sure your children have flashlights and or reflective tape whenever they're Mm -hmm. out trick-or-treating obviously make sure the makeup uh that they're wearing is non-toxic make (laughs) sure you accompany your kids because especially if they're little kids like the kids that should be trick-or-treating and that's the next six and unders that get run over those six and unders that are going to the bathroom in their pants and crawling they should have a parent with them uh so uh, james at what age should children stop trick-or-treating I think 13 or 14 should be your final year. Even if you're still dressing? Like, even if you're still dressing up as a teenager? I went when I was 16, I think, and I even felt a little awkward about it. 
Now, if you're cool with that, by all means, dress up and keep going. But I don't know. I think I think 16 is really the max. If you can drive and you're now driving to houses <laughs> to get candy, something's wrong with that. Uh, just just a few more tips, and then we can wrap up the uh, the safety portion. Uh, make sure your kids don't eat any of those goodies before they get home, because again, mm-hmm. allergies. Mm-hmm. You know, you always want to check your candy. Like I remember when I was a kid, like there was this big scare about people putting stuff in candy, and you'd always lay your candy out. And I remember I've never heard of it actually oh, happening though. I never have either, but I remember there were hospitals that I heard of, and I don't know if this is like an old wives' tale that would X-ray your candy bags I to look for like too. razor blades and needles and stuff from like crazy people that do that. So, but it's really more just allergies. You don't want a, a child that has an allergy to accidentally eat something mm-hmm. uh, that has uh, something they're allergic to always uh look both ways before crossing the street uh don't run into the street make sure you're not texting if you're driving at night folks and what they do around here i don't know what they do in your neighborhood but you're pretty much required it's like an unwritten rule that you turn your flashers on halloween night and everybody everybody drives with their flashers on just really slow making sure that you know because kids are always going to dart out in between cars. So Uh always drive with your flashers on when you're in those residential neighborhoods, drive really slow, make sure you're not smoking the weeds or drinking the alcohols. uh, (laughs) Those of you who are driving uh, and take extra precaution during that, that death hour of Halloween from dusk to one hour afterwards, they call it the death hour. I believe you. It's a terrible hour. So, Oh my goodness. So that's my safety tips. Well, that was really kind of a downer, but also very nice of you to be concerned for our listeners and our listeners' children. That was well done, Luke. I try. Before before we move on, let's take a break for a word from our sponsor. Uh, I have to assume it's, you know, Hershey or Mars or maybe Toblerone, my favorite. It is none of those. We do not have a sponsor, but I would check out our episode on, on... how chocolate is made, I think it is. Ooh, that was a good one. Um, that was a really good one. Learning the difference between cocoa and cacao and all of that stuff. And is Hershey actually making chocolate or is it just garbage? You know, that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, so check those out. But I do have just a pile of shout outs, Luke. I am proud to say that I am 100% caught up on emails and I have printed out all of the envelopes to stuff with stickers this weekend. You're so lying. my hollow. No, I- I'm. I'm- dead serious okay this is the first time since june that i've been caught up good on so, you james good on good, you good on me okay i'm gonna bust through these thaddeus h a civil engineer who still likes us even though we pick on them so that was <laughs> nice uh he made many good points about why civils aren't just completely the worst um and i said you know i know a couple that i like so there's that paul m another civil paul's one of the people i neglected for literally months uh, i think three and he found us by searching up his profession civil engineering so that's pretty cool seo works um aaron m another longtime waiter a mechanical engineer from the university of kansas he Ooh. made sure to let us know that they are not the mud anythings but the jayhawks <laughs> <laughs> the mud hawks <laughs> the mud hawks um he also started a subreddit for us now i don't really know what a a subreddit is is. (laughs) yeah but go to reddit and it's r slash unpro engineering and this is a way for our listeners to get involved and point out all the mistakes we make talk about their favorite episodes all that good stuff currently two followers on it just saying sweet so get on there and follow the unpro engineering subreddit Patrick without a K would like an episode on woodworking and the woodworking industry. And I know this is something we've tossed around before. And I think we're both kind of just embarrassed about our lack of knowledge, but maybe this will give us the push we need to make it happen. Uh, Michael S, a recent graduate of the university of Michigan. I mean, it's a great engineering school. They just beat up on my Nittany lions too much. And I don't like that. He'd like a show on Adrenos and microcontrollers. And funny thing, we were supposed to record an episode kind of about that topic this week, but we both got too busy. So that should be on our list. Yeah, work gets in the way so much. I hate that. Grant B is one of our heavier listeners lately. He's been emailing a lot, listening a lot, wrote in with an suggestion suggestion on soap and detergents the chemicals that make us clean so added that one to the list mr grant thanks for all the write-ins and then last but not least sam b uh, hosts a podcast church of the geek 
Uh, it looks like it covers everything from Star Wars to Dungeons and Dragons and all sorts of nerdy topics. So go check that one out because nice. all of that stuff's right up my alley. For sure. Uh, for any of you who have suggestions, want a shout out, want stickers, they'll probably take months, but you might get them eventually, <laughs> email us at unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com. And make sure that you like and subscribe and share. And remember, you can always yell at your smart devices to play the Unprofessional Engineering podcast to get the latest episodes. Funny that you say that, Luke. I was looking at some of our stats. 90 something percent come from mobile listens but basically all the other percents come from smart devices like that. Ooh. So I figure you're just shouting at it all the time, getting our listens up. I, so. I think I think the smart devices, it's an easy way. You just say, listen to this, and it's just the, the latest episode pops up for whatever topic you're interested in, so. Yeah, pretty cool. All right, do you want to get into pumpkin carving? Like Let's an get engineer. into some pumpkins. All so right, do you so over enunciate the P's in pumpkin? Are you a pumpkin? Pump? Like, do you put a no, pumpkin? No, pumpkin. Pumpkin. Your, yours is... Yours is Pumpkin, like you, you skip the second P. It's like a soft P. So it's not pumpkin. No, it's pumpkin. Okay. Pumpkin I, with an pumpkin. N. No, no, not pumpkin. I hate that. <laughs> Anyways, um, true or false? You were a notorious jack o' lantern smasher when you were a child. Unfortunately, true. Ooh, I knew that. I could just tell was, based yeah. off of what I know about you. I, I, I'm reformed now, but I was a relatively bad child. <laughs> All right. Would you like to hear the story of how jack-o'-lanterns began? Well, it's the devil's holiday. I'm, I'm assuming it involves the Dark Lord in some way. It, in fact, does. <laughs> oh, that was a total so, guess. So it originated uh, based off of an Irish myth about a man named Stingy Jack. So according to the story, old Stingy Jack invited the devil to have a drink with him, which I don't know how you do that, but that's cool. Uh, so Stingy Jack, being very stingy, didn't want to pay for his drink. So he convinced the devil to turn himself into a coin, because I guess the devil is also a shapeshifter. Uh, and he was going to buy the drinks with the coin, and then the devil could turn back into his normal shape once the drinks were paid for. Well, Stingy Jack being so cheap, he decided to keep the money instead of paying for the drinks. And so he put the coin in his pocket next to a cross, and that prevented the devil from changing back to its original form. So Jack eventually freed the devil under the condition that he wouldn't bother him for a year, and he wouldn't claim his soul. So the next year, somehow the stupid devil fell for another trick and Jack convinced him to climb up a tree to pick him a piece of fruit. And he carved a cross on the tree while he was up there. And then he did the same old thing where he was like, okay, I'll let you come down, but you can't come after me for 10 years this time. Which makes me wonder, why didn't he just keep him as a coin? But that's, that's fine. Okay, so now he's tricked the devil twice. So shortly after, Jack dies. And apparently he goes up to heaven and God's like, uh-uh-uh, stingy Jack, you're a bad person. We're not letting you into heaven. And the devil's all angry at him. He's like, we're not letting you into hell because I don't like you either, right? So he was good. He didn't claim his soul. So he did keep his word. But he sent Jack off into the dark night with burning coals to light his way. Jack put the coal in a carved out turnip and began roaming the earth. And the Irish began referring to this guy as Jack of the Lantern and then simply became Jack o' Lantern eventually. And so then over time in Ireland and Scotland, people uh, would carve scary faces into turnips and potatoes, which makes sense for those two countries, right? Mm -hmm. And then in England, they would use large beets and carve things into that. And then as people moved to America, uh, they found pumpkins, which is a native fruit of America. And then they started figuring out these make perfect jack-o'-lanterns. And that is where this tradition comes from. That was not at all what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> me neither but i found it to be a very entertaining well story. it is i mean i think halloween in general like if you just if you just do a quick google of like halloween history it all kind of started as like celtic stuff so that kind of mm -hmm. makes sense that there's like an irish twist to it but uh -huh. that's uh that's a little strange i'll be honest I with you so too all right so how about some tips on carving your pumpkin like an engineer or just like a professional pumpkin carver how about okay let, let's go with professional pumpkin carver Okay, so first, cutting the hole in your pumpkin. Cut, cut it from the bottom, not the top. 
Now I've never done this, but this allows you to just set your pumpkin on top of it, of the candle. So you don't burn your hand and all of that stuff. It's way easier than trying to drop it down in there and light okay. it and burn okay. yourself, all that stuff. If you are going to cut it from the top, do it at a 45 degree angle uh, around the stem so that it can fit snugly back on top and doesn't fall inside. I've tried doing it from the back, but then when you look through like the holes of your pumpkin, like the face that yeah, you it carve, looks terrible. you can see the hole and that's terrible. Yeah. Um, poke holes in your pumpkin, Luke. So if you're going to be using a stencil like I do, because I have no artistic ability, uh, poke holes around the stencil and then just like with a nail or something, and then just connect the dots as you're carving to cut out your intricate shapes. Interesting. Here's a really good one that I've never done before, but I'm glad I saw this. Thin out your pumpkin. So when you're in there scooping out the guts and stuff like that, mm -hmm. uh, thin out the wall that you're going to be carving. If you scrape the side of it, you can use like an ice cream scoop or a spoon or whatever. It's nice and thin. It's way easier to carve that way. Uh, I've also saw something online where people attach like a mixer, like for cake batter. The, uh, the, stick, the, the stick mixer. Yeah. And then you just like, and you scoop out all the guts of it. That's that the way. noise it makes. That, that is one. the noise. It, it is, makes. without a doubt. <laughs> How you cut and where you cut matters as well, Luke. So you want to start cutting at the center of your pattern and working your way out. If you do it from the outside in, which I've done this before, it starts weakening the pumpkin too much, and you're much much more likely to break off like oh, the little bits of your pumpkin. I've done that and before, the and I get all yeah. frustrated, and I pick the pumpkin up, and I smash it. Well, we already talked about your smashing <sighs> pumpkin tendencies. You also want to cut in an up and down motion, like a sewing machine, uh, so that you don't break the tool and so that you don't break bits off of your pumpkin. But if you do break a little bit off, Luke, you can just use a toothpick to secure it back in place. Oh. Now, anybody looking at it probably won't be able to tell from a distance, but you're going to be able to know I that you screwed up. That. That's like how they do those fruit baskets. They use toothpicks yes. to hold everything together. Exactly. That's, that's pretty slick. I never thought of that. Yeah. So just so you can live with yourself for having to fix it like that, that's okay. And it's Halloween, so you can just eat your shame with all of that chocolate you get, right? <laughs> so that's good. Um, this is a good one. Make your pumpkins last longer by soaking them in an ice water bath with bleach. One gallon of ice water with one teaspoon of bleach will help kill any bacteria and keep it from breaking down. You can also rub the inside of the pumpkin and the cutting areas with petroleum jelly, and this helps it last longer as well. I got a tip for you about that. So if you want to keep uh, the squirrels away, Ooh, which I, I hate squirrels, it's, I like saying their name like that. You take, I couldn't say that word until fifth grade. Just so I you know. know. I still can't. <laughs> I, you, so you take uh, apple cider vinegar and Ooh. some kind of cayenne pepper sauce, and you mix the two of them together in a spray bottle. I don't know what the ratios are, and you just lightly mist the outside of the pumpkin and around the pumpkin, and it'll keep all the squirrels from eating your pumpkins. Well, that's an interesting tip. I like that one. Yeah. Going along with that same theme of putting spices on your pumpkin, if you put inside your pumpkin like cinnamon or nutmeg or cloves, something like that, when you light that candle, it also acts as an air freshener as well. Oh. Huh? Um, and one other, I think I only have, a, well, one other tip. Um, to make it really shine, we all put our candle in there, right? But if you put a piece of aluminum foil at the bottom of your pumpkin and then put the candle in there, all of that light reflects and it really glows then. I've never done that, but that's just a brilliant idea, don't you think? It's brilliant. Brilliant. Um, one other tip, if you are going to cut a hole in the bottom of your pumpkin, uh, make sure that you have other holes in the pumpkin. Don't just do that like where you carve away part of it and you can like see the light shining mm -hmm. behind it because you won't get enough oxygen in the pumpkin to have the candle burn. So oh. you do need some sort of hole in there to get I the gotcha. air in. Make sense? So all of your tips, James, fly in the face of safety. Yes. Yes, they do. So I have some safety tips, <clears throat> excuse me, specifically for carving. So Let's first hear. of all, you're all don't, about safety today. I am, James. I can't help it. That's that's my contribution. You're a good person. So don't use a kitchen knife. And there's, an, there's a really specific reason why you don't use a kitchen knife. Make sure you use one of those little orange handled, it kind of looks like a really thin butter knife with some waves on it. 
which for sure breaks after two and, carbs. And the crazy thing is they cut so much better than Discipline. a sharp knife. And there's a, there's a specific reason why. Do you know, James? Why, no, why a why? super sharp knife isn't as good as one of those rounded little carvers. Do you know why? I need to know. Surface area and surface tension. Ooh. Have you ever taken like uh, a piece of metal or maybe a cutting board and it's laying on like a flat, wet surface and you go to lift it up and there's that tension that you can't lift it up? I have think, done that. Think about when you're I mean, putting, I could lift it up because I'm not a you're really strong. Well, you're really strong. Yeah. But think about when you're taking a knife, a super sharp, you know, steak knife that has really flat, super smooth sides, you're sticking it into a pumpkin that has a lot of moisture in it. So that moisture creates this surface tension between the super sharp edges, sides of that knife and the pumpkin. And the thinner the blade, the better. So when you look at those carvers, they're typically, you know, two or three inches. They're about maybe, I don't know, a quarter of an inch wide. They're, they're thicker than a steak knife and they're, mm -hmm. they're not even sharp. You can like rub them over your hand over and over again and they don't cut. And it's because there's no surface tension whenever they're carving through the, uh, the pumpkin material. Well, isn't that something, Luke? Uh, carve with the top on. So leave the top on when you start carving. Uh, make sure you use a template because if you go willy nilly, uh, willy -nilly. uh most of the stabbing, the stabby stabs happen mm. when things are wet and the pumpkin is slipping or the knife is slipping. So keep things dry. Don't ever let someone under the age of 18 carve a pumpkin. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> they can scoop the guts, the part that nobody likes. Um, consider painting your pumpkins, James. Yeah, they I'll stay longer, that. you know, all that sort of stuff. Don't I'm a use, bedazzler myself. I, I would bet that. Don't use candles. Uh, throw a glow stick or a battery light. And if you happen to have access to a four or $500,000 CNC machine, you can oh, just put yeah. the pumpkin on a CNC machine and have it uh, programmed for you. Yeah, a water jet just blasts that sucker. That'll be great. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, I love all these tips, Luke. They're very safe and definitely don't ruin the fun of Halloween. I Not like at that. all. Not uh, at all. <laughs> a couple other things. I know we're super late for our next break. Uh, if you really want to carve like an engineer, I would suggest using a drill with drill bits to poke yep. the holes in instead of a nail. Did that I know for the that's first time safe. last year. Oh, did you? Work well? Yeah, it's all right. All right. I'd also suggest using a Dremel to really carve nice, accurate lines into your pumpkin. And like you just said, maybe an LED light. Not only is it safer, but it's super bright as well. Boom. Now you have time to hand out candy because you got done so fast. Nailed it. Also, check out NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory pumpkin carving. They mm. have a really cool blog about how to take your pumpkin carving to the next level. It's mostly about turning your pumpkin carving into STEM projects where you involve electronics and you have motion and it, it's really cool. So go check that out. Now, I know we're way overdue. So let's take a break for this week's Luke's rant. So I was gonna make my rant about mini candy bars and they're getting smaller and smaller, but I mm -hmm. think everybody realizes that. And it's just, it's, it, it, it's a blight is what I'm, as I'm going to call it. It is a blight. It. It's a blight. I've just been wanting to use the word blight, but I'm going to well change done. this up. Uh, so right now I'm wearing a red hot chili peppers t-shirt. You are. And with the pandemic and everything going on and everybody's on Zoom meetings, I have about a seven shirt rotation that I have. So I got about seven good t-shirts that I tend to rotate. And what I'm finding is I get on calls and I realize I was on this recurring call last week and I had the exact same t-shirt on. So I shut my camera off. I run into the other room, put a different t-shirt on and come back in. And it's, just, it's really frustrating because I don't know who said that Zoom calls, you have to have cameras on. It drives me crazy. Like if nobody starts the camera, everybody keeps their camera off. The minute one yeah. person starts their Zoom camera, then everybody else feels the need to turn their camera on. And, you know, again, with my seven shirt rotation, I mean, there's at least two or three times a week where I realize that I'm on the same call recurring from last week with the same t-shirt on. And it's just really frustrating. Yeah, I for sure have been wearing the same hoodie for like two straight weeks on basically all my calls. Yeah. My t-shirts don't change every day. I'm dirty. I get it. <laughs> but you know what? I'm I'm with you. 
turn off or keep your cameras off on the Zoom calls. Yeah, I just, how am uh, I supposed to multitask when I have to pretend exactly. like I'm listening anyway? Exactly. Right? How am I supposed to get anything done while I'm not listening to you? Yeah, exactly. Oh. I love it, Luke. Um, okay, moving on. I only have one more thing to talk about, and that's tips on getting the most candy. Do you have anything else you wanted to cover? So I have two sections. I have uh, a what do you do with the seeds, and then I oh, also yeah. have a COVID. 19 safety tip section. We can go wherever you want with this, James. What do you do with the seeds, Luke? Are so you here's a the deal. Tosser or a keeper? Yeah, you're you're either one of two camps. You're you're the person who's like, this is way too much work to like get these out, pull all the nasty stringies off, and they just pitch it. Or you're like me, and I absolutely love pumpkin seeds. They're loaded with something like magnesium. I forget what the mineral is that's really good for you that's in them. So they're, they're actually relatively healthy as long as you don't have um, diverticulitis and they get stuck inside of your intestines right, and you die. Right. But other than that, there's that. Yeah. There's that. But if you don't have that, they're really healthy for you. So I keep them. And the tip I would give you is uh, clean them really well, mm-hmm. rinse Solid. them off, pat them dry avocado oil, lightly coat of avocado oil, some sea salt, 250 degrees in an oven until they're golden brown. And depending on how big the seeds are or small the seeds, they're going to vary. Give them a shake every five or 10 minutes and then send them to me and I will, <laughs> I will consume them. Uh, Solid advice. The other uh, thing you could do is you could just give them a quick rinse off, let them dry out for about 21 days to get totally dehydrated. Holy moly. Save them for next, like midsummer, plant them, and have your own pumpkin that you don't have to go out and buy. I'm okay with that one. I, I have a buddy who's growing pumpkins. He always does, but he has them growing especially well this year is he a big people. pumpkin grower like is he the guy that no does, he's oh. not no no you need to really take care of your pumpkins to make yeah. that happen but he does have three of them growing so three different vines running because he has three children you basically can really only grow one pumpkin per vine because mm-hmm. they suck up so many nutrients but if you don't know these things take up space i'm talking like yeah. 20 feet per vine like they're all over the place and they need so much water like it's ridiculous i mean if you think about a pumpkin it's probably you know what it's 75 percent water all the moisture inside of it they need watered constantly yeah um all right so tips on getting the most candy luke i found this very interesting so it's a no-brainer right you just go to rich people houses (laughs) <laughs> All right. That's it. So there you go, kids. That's it. No, not really. Actually, we uh, I read an article. An economist from Ohio ran a test with his kids where he had to bribe them as well to make up for any lost candy that they got, but they did a test to figure this out. So apparently they lived in an area where they had like clear delineation between upper, middle, and lower class neighborhoods. Okay. And the kids went out to each of them and uh, found pretty interesting results so it turns out like uh in the lower class areas you know maybe they got smaller candy uh but there were a lot of people home they got a lot of candy that way um in the upper class uh neighborhood you're gonna go there you're gonna get full-size candy bars you're gonna get like extra things from the doors you might get extra candy bars whatever not so fast my friends my friends um anyways not not necessarily the case because they found that a lot of the people in the upper class neighborhoods were not home during Halloween because they were the ones out drinking and driving and running Mm -hmm. kids over. But even more so uh, as a factor is since the houses in these neighborhoods are farther apart, like they have palatial estates, right? It takes longer to walk door to door or door to the next one that has their lights on. So they ended up getting less candy because of the fewer number of houses that they were able to reach in the same amount of time. And how do you so think they, those rich people pay for those houses? They don't give food away don't give to strangers. Candy. Yeah, exactly. That's the only so, way they afford it. The tip from this person was go to that middle-class neighborhood. You can hit two or three houses in the same time it takes to hit one in the rich person neighborhood and you get candy from all of them. So there you go, Luke. That's how you make it happen. So James, were you a a local neighborhood trick-or-treater, neighborhood crasher? Like what were you? I usually did the local neighborhood thing. Um, My town didn't really have a whole lot of 
rich middle poor we were all just kind of the same people i think but it was it was relatively um, rural rural, rural, yes. rural where you yes. lived correct yeah so very rural um a lot, a lot of good memories trick-or-treating but yeah i usually stuck around the neighborhood i think one or two years i changed neighborhoods only so i could go out with my friends but again that's when i was getting to that 13 14 15 year old age were you a where... trick-or-treater retaliator I don't know what that means, Luke. That's whenever they give you raisins, nickels, or popcorn balls, and then- And then you egg their house. Yeah, that's the proper course of action to take. (laughs) Just making sure- (laughs) Obviously. Mrs. Stilly, God rest her soul, would either give you- You had you had the- She she lived directly across the street. You had a choice of a box of raisins, a quarter, or a popcorn ball. What did and you go with? The quarter? I would go with the popcorn ball because what would happen is the next day she would have about 300 popcorn balls in her front yard that she had to clean up. So <laughs> That's so uh, mean. Okay, we're going to wrap this up here with Halloween COVID safety tips. Uh, all right, so first it. of all, if you're handing out candy, this is for the people handing out, make sure you're wearing a mask. It makes everybody feel comfortable, however you feel about masks or not. Keep in mind, these are little kids. Make sure they feel safe. Wear a mask, wear gloves. Uh, You can use a six to eight foot piece of PVC pipe or ABS, whatever that long tubing is you use for, uh, and you just stand on your porch, put it up at a little bit of an angle, drop the candy down to shoot. So not only does it make it fun, but you're staying six feet away from these kids. And you can turn it into a potato gun afterwards. Exactly. And you could shoot popcorn (laughs) balls at Mrs. Stilly's house. Um, Or if you don't have six to eight foot pieces of PVC laying around, just take your broom handle, unscrew it from the broom duct tape a little basket to the end of it and you can hand candy out that way to keep that maximum distance because you have no idea these germ ridden kids are running up and sneezing and coughing and giving you the covid so hopefully they all uh, get run over before they make it to my house (laughs) so that is how you keep a safe distance from people handing out candy this halloween I was thinking about just setting it out there and being like hey take some candy but i figure it'll all be gone after the first one right yep That's what I would do, too, because kids are jerks. Luke, I think this was really helpful. I think we're going to have the best Halloween ever now. Safest Halloween. They're going to be safe. They're going to carve pumpkins and bedazzle them nicely. They're going to know the history of Halloween and Mm jack-o'-lanterns. I just feel like we've made the world a better place. We have. If you think that we've made the world a better place. Send us candy. Send absolutely send us candy. candy. We have gotten candy before and it was delicious. Also, those zero bars, oh man, those are good. Anyways, if you want to do any of that stuff, sending us candy or suggesting an episode or telling us about the haul of candy you got this year for Halloween, email us at unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com. And until next time, see ya.